Hello and welcome to another edition of Zog Science. Uh, today we're going to be talking about gel electrophoresis. Um, another uh, kind of name for this biotechnology is DNA fingerprinting. Um, DNA fingerprinting is more sort of the entire process, but gel electrophoresis is the specific technique um, that we're going to be discussing today, but, and also how it relates with DNA fingerprinting. Uh, so well, we've known about DNA and the structure of DNA for a long time. Uh, Watson and Crick published their paper in 1953. Um, but since that time, in the last uh, 60 years or so, um, we have really learned a lot about, uh, about DNA. And we've been able to uh, develop techniques to use the DNA for our advantage, um, to do things like uh, identify um, blood samples, um, of you know uh, crime scenes, um, determining who the parents are of a child, um, and also to do some bioengineering to create some products. Um, the old way that they used to do a lot of these things, uh, specifically the determining um, parents and identification of criminal criminals, was via blood typing, and we'll learn more about uh, blood typing uh, in our genetics unit, um, but. Uh, DNA fingerprinting is a much better because, or gel electrophoresis is a much better technique to use um, because uh, people can share the same blood types, um, whereas people are not going to be able to share um, the same DNA unless you are an identical twin or a clone. So just some sort of uh, things to, to talk about first. Every person has a unique sequence of DNA, and we can use restriction enzymes um, to cut strands of DNA into pieces. And depending on which restriction enzymes we use, we're going to get different size pieces. So what we can do is we use this technique, gel electrophoresis, in order to separate out the DNA into its various sizes. And then we can see, okay, this person has bands at this location. Their DNA is this particular length. That is the same as the uh, blood sample that we found at a crime scene. Therefore, we would link those two together. Um, and different enzymes, or the same enzyme is going to cut different people's DNA differently because of the very fact that they have different DNA. So let's kind of um, take a look at this process and see what it looks like. So, um, oops, skipping ahead a little bit. So, um, what we've done, all right, is that we've taken our restriction enzymes, we've put them into the same DNA samples, all right, um, and we've been able to create different strands of DNA, or sorry, different size lengths of DNA. So, what we do is we take our samples, and we're going to place them into an agarose gel. The agarose gel is going to act like a maze, and it's going to um, allow the smaller fragments to move faster than the larger fragments because the small fragments have an easier time getting through the maze. We use what's called a micropipette um, that allows us to um, get very specific volumes and we load these into what are called wells. So these are the various wells and what's going to happen is that we've got a positive in and we've got a negative in and that's very important because DNA is negatively charged. So if we take a look at a piece of DNA, right, you notice that on the outside of the sugar phosphate backbone that we've got these negatively charged oxygens. Right? So we've got these negatively charged oxygens and what happens is that because the DNA is loaded next to the negative side that repels, right? the negative side is up here where the DNA started, that is going to repel the negatively charged DNA. Opposites are going to repel one another, so that's going to push it towards the positive side. Notice that the smaller DNA fragments are moving much faster. Again, that's because they are able to move through the maze more quickly. So um, this is kind of a, a, a band that allows us to see where the end of the line is. And whenever we're running a gel, we never want to run it off the edge. So always kind of stop before it gets off the edge. And what we get is that the various bands of DNA, their sizes, okay, they spread out. So notice that the largest size is up here next to the wells where we started, and then the smallest is farther away. And what we can do is we can then stain the DNA so that that way 
um, we can see where the bands are. We'll be using a blue stain um, when we do this lab in order to see them. So just kind of the short version, um, DNA is negatively charged, so when we load them into the gel, the DNA samples are going to move from the negative to the positive. And again, the gel is a porous, and it's kind of like a, uh, again, it's like a maze. Large fragments get stuck, and they can't move very quickly through the maze, whereas the small fragments are able to move much more quickly. So how does this actually look in a practical sense? Well, what we can do is, again, we use the same enzyme to cut up different DNA to get different fragments. And what happens is that people's uh, DNA separates out into these nice bands, and then we can compare between people. So if we're determining parents, we can take a look at a daughter's DNA, and each of her bands is going to come from one of the parents. If we have a daughter whose DNA comes from somewhere else, notice this band right, does not have a corresponding one in the dad. It's a little bit different. That must mean that her parents are shared, right? So... She's got, um, she's got one, a uh, couple bands from her mom, but not all of them. Uh, same thing with this son over here. This son has shares no bands with the parents, so therefore this son must be adopted. All right. Um, we can also use this to determine who left the blood stain. Right. So we look at our blood stain and we compare it to our suspects, and whichever one matches up and is exactly the same, that is going to be. Um, that is going to be the match. So who do you think it is? It's going to be John, right? If we take a look, right, each of these bands lines up with one another. Uh, we can do the same thing, again, figuring out parents of a, let's say, a deceased soldier. They can't identify him. They can use the DNA of parents and figure it out. So who do we think it is? Who, who, where, where can he get all of the bands from? It's going to be, um, <clears throat> uh, in my estimation, parents um, D and C, right? Because let's see, we got that one right there, right here, right here, right there, 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 and then this last one down here. And just because the the width of the band is different doesn't necessarily mean anything, right? It's it's all about whether or not they are present, not necessarily how thick they are. All right, uh, that's all we got for today. Um, look forward to the lab because it's going to be a fun one, and I'll see you the next time.